This is James McCord, and for my final exam, I will be talking about the impact of war on the American colonies and later the United States of America in general. So the first war that I would want to talk about would be King Philip's War. Now, King Philip's War was basically a war fought between Medicament and the New England colonies. Now, it started off as the Native Americans and the New England colonies really just traded with each other and kept it at an uneasy peace where they didn't really interfere with each other on a lot of situations and kept to themselves. But after a few Native Americans were tried and hanged from Medicamet's tribe, they uh, started a war against the New England colonies and it led to 3,000 Native Americans from different tribes being killed and 600 New England colonists being killed because of it. Now, the lasting effect of this war can still really be felt in well into the 20th century because the feeling towards Native Americans was solidified after this event. It really created a strong sense of hate towards Natives, and it also took away any sort of claim that the Native Americans had to New England area anymore. Um, it also contributed to the sense of the colonists feeling a sense of autonomy um, because they really financed themselves throughout this war and didn't get much help from England. So they felt like they were an independent people in that situation. Um, the next war I would like, like to talk about would be the French and Indian War. And the French and Indian War was another example of the American colonists really putting a lot of the effort into this war without as much help from the from their mother country as you'd expect. On the frontier, it was a lot of American colonists, colonists um, leading each other and leading themselves um, with minor roles from the actual British soldiers from Britain. Um, so this created another sense of autonomy. Uh, this also led to taxes needing to be put on the American people, on the American colonists, sorry, by the British government, which the Americans didn't really like, considering they had been so independent, really, without much intervention from the British throughout the past couple centuries. They'd been doing things kind of without really any oversight of the British. They just knew that they were British citizens and that Britain, whenever they needed them help, their help, they would help. But being that they were being attacked so much and they didn't have any real representation made them feel very upset, which led to the American Revolution. The American Revolution really established a national feeling and a national want for freedom, liberty, uh, property, and the pursuit of happiness. And these foundations really carried on uh, for generations to come even after the war ended. Everybody felt this way. They felt that they needed to be independent from any other country and they could rule themselves, which they did. So soon after the American Revolution, there were a couple of rebellions known as Shays Rebellion and the Whiskey Rebellion, which really showed the impact of how independent wanting and independent minded these Americans, these new Americans felt, you know, they didn't want any sort of tyranny whatsoever impending their rights. And Shea, Daniel Shea, and the leaders of the Whiskey Rebellion felt that their rights were being trampled upon by a new tyranny. Um, the Articles Confederation did not accurately pay them and took away their rights from being taxed too much. At least they felt that way. Now, granted, these rebellions were put down, but it did cause a change in the Articles of Confederation. And by change, I mean completely threw them out and created a new sort of government under the Constitution, uh, which we still use to this day. Now, the next war that I would really want to talk about would be the Indian Wars, um, which were usually, which were led by Andrew Jackson in a lot of situations. He fought in them. Um, he was the president during the Cherokee removal, the, the Trail of Tears, where he moved them to, um, or he came up with the plans for the Trail of Tears to move, to relocate the Cherokee from uh, 
Georgia and Alabama, Tennessee area to uh, Oklahoma, made them move all the way out there. Uh, but the Indian Wars really solidified that hate towards Native Americans as well. It really created this sense of they're different from us. They're not as they're not as civilized as us. They never will be. We might as well just move them from our, our lands so we can take our lands. And by our lands, I mean their lands that we felt at the time, the, the Americans felt at the time, were theirs by right, by manifest destiny, at least. So an honorable mention that I also want to put in this final exam uh, video would be the slave rebellions, from all, particularly Nat Turner's rebellion. Now, these might not technically count as wars and their impact, but the impact of it really could be felt throughout the entire nation for decades to come because these slave rebellions really brought up the issue of slavery and really divided the nation into taking sides on it. Now, this also led in the end towards the Civil War. Sorry about that. Um, after the slave rebellions, the next war that I would like to talk about is the last war we mentioned in our discussion, which would be the Civil War. Now, the Civil War was publicized by the South as being a war over the rights of the states, over the rights of the federal government, like how much the federal government could control the states. And this is partially true, but in reality, those rights were the rights to keep slaves, which is what most people know the Civil War is being fought over. Um, but it was also to stop the spread of slavery from going out west, which a lot of people don't really realize that. Because a lot of the North, the Northern representatives, a lot of – even Abraham Lincoln himself was okay with keeping slavery in the South. He was not an avid abolitionist. Abolitionists at the time were considered pretty much extreme um, by many cases. But most people in the North just didn't want slavery spreading anywhere else. They just wanted to confine it to the South or – in an extreme situation, move all the slaves back to Africa and expel slavery entirely and the African-American peoples. But um, so the impact of the Civil War really caused a rift between the North and South for decades. Uh, even so it can still be felt to this day in many, in many cases. But um, it also ended slavery in through the Emancipation Proclamation and after the war, the uh, 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendment gave many rights to African Americans and other races. Still not woman, women, though, sadly. Um, unfortunately, at that time, women were still looked as not equals to men. But uh, either way, the lasting impact of the Civil War uh, carries on to this day, and all of these wars really played a role in our nation's history and continue to do so. And uh, that was all I really have to say. Um, thank you, and thank you for the semester.